All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. When we say mitigation, um, since we will focus on this part, uh, mitigation, monitoring, and recommended findings, um, so what is mitigation? Mitigation is the implementation of measures designed to reduce the undesirable effects of a proposed action of the uh, on the environment. So again, as I uh, as I uh, uh, mentioned earlier uh, to everyone, um, that on every progress and all of every development, there is always an impact. May it be positive or may it be negative. May it be a large impact or uh, not significant impact. But every time there is always an impact, uh, a negative impact. And um, if there is a negative impact, then therefore we always have to um, we always have to propose as to what will be our mitigation to this um, negative impact. So to arrive at findings, of course we have to identify, uh, we have to predict, and we have to judge. So arriving at the findings in the preliminary, we are still talking about the preliminary assessment, okay? So arriving at the findings and the preliminary assessment requires three steps. So of course, the first step is to identify potential impacts. Um, all right, sorry, um, my other phone uh, went down. I actually need my other phone for an extra monitor. All right, so uh, let's go back. So um, again, there are, um, in arriving at the findings, there are... Um, three steps that would require us um, in our preliminary assessment. So first is identify. Um, can you hear me? I just want to uh, verify. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you. So there are three steps. So first step is identify potential impacts. Second is predict potential impacts. And of course, judge the significant potential of impacts. So um, when we say identify potential impacts, um, um, there are resources that describe potential impacts of the typical small-scale activities. Um, so we will uh, identify that. And then um, in predicting uh, potential impacts, so we will de determine which potential impacts. When we say potential, possible impacts um, that are likely to become actual that will that will or might happen as we conduct or as we have our proposed project or activity and quantify these impacts to the extent possible. So, yeah, that's um, predict potential impacts. And of course, judge the significance of the, po of the potential impacts. So we will uh, determine whether these predictive impacts are indeed significant or not. Uh, we will also um, judge if um, this impacts will 100% um, happen in the actual situation or maybe just 80% of it. Um, and then this will, um, this will often depend on how effective the proposed mitigation measures are. Um, if we can identify, well, if actually not a matter of we can, but we will definitely identify as to what will be these potential impacts. And of course, uh, based on those impacts, um, we, we will be able to propose a better way to mitigate this, um, this potential impacts. Um, predicting impacts um, can involve actually um, through... Um, quantitative analysis. So we can do simulation models, we can do statistical analysis. Um, that's how um, we can um, 
predict impacts. Um, it's actually almost involves also qualitative analysis like uh, professional judgment and with the reasoning. But on our case, since um, we cannot really um, go to the our study area, we cannot really, you know, do a face-to-face -face so um, we can, you know, better brainstorm. Um, so basically, um, our judgment to uh, the project or to the proposed activity that we will be doing will be based on professional judgment. Um, yeah. So since uh, I, I think, um, sorry, yes, now I can definitely say that we might not be able to get a primary data um, from this, um, for this subject or for our proposed study. Uh, yeah, later I will discuss to you as to what will be our proposed activity or proposed project for, for this subject. All right. Um, also, um, I would also like to um, repeat this again that uh, we will only proceed to phase two of the AIA process if phase one indicates that a full AIA study is, is required because there are small scale activities that do not require an EIA study. And there are cases that um, it will only require IEE or, you know, project description. It actually depends on the category of the project, in which later I will also be discussing about the category. So um, let's go on to the full EIA study. So the full EIA study has a very similar objectives and structure to a preliminary assessment. So, um, however, the full EIA study differs in important ways. Um, so before, um, as I would like to go back, um, this is the typical preliminary assessment outline. So we have the background, description of the baseline situation, evaluation of potential impacts. Um, we have the mitigate, mitigation and monitoring, and of course, um, the recommended findings. Um, it's actually almost the same with the full EIA, but these are the things or... Um, most of the um, the components that are very um, that differs to the preliminary assessment. Of course, first is a formal scoping process that proceeds to to study the ID issues to be addressed. So when we say uh, scoping, um, it's actually a public scoping in which we will go to the area, um, and then um, we will he uh, we will hold a scoping in which stakeholders will attend the scoping. And they will state as to what are their issues and what could be the possible impacts to them as part of the stakeholders. And then from that, from the scoping, we will take note of all those um, issues and concern um, that relates to our projects and possible impacts. And to that, um, we will address those scoping and include that um, in our EIA study. Uh, we will also include uh, the, uh, the acceptability of those stakeholders that are directly involved to the project, to the proposed project or to the proposed activity. So that's the public scoping. In the preliminary, um, as we can see, there is no, pub there is no scoping. Um, it was more of the initial, uh, I'd say it's more of the initial and it's more of the baseline um, situation and um, assessing the possible um, environmental impacts. Another uh, difference is the analysis of environmental impacts is more detailed. And the preliminary, it's like stating what is the possible impacts and, and, and putting in the monitoring or putting in the mitigation of that impact. Um, in the EIA study, it is very detailed that it would come to a point that you will be studying the each component of the environment. So um, if the social... Um, the, the human health is being affected, so you have to put a specific study to that. If uh, the fauna and flora, flora will be affected, then you have to put a specific study to that. And next, um, the next difference is the alternatives. Alternatives must be formally defined. So the impacts of each alternative must be identified and evaluated and the results compared. So um, um, when we say alternative, um, it is also not being stated in the assessment. Um, but in every impact, um, in every mitigation, if we can find an alternative to mitigate that impact, then we will state that alternative. Next is the public participation is usually required, in which in our, um, in our preliminary assessment, um, 
the public participation was not indicated at all. So that is why in the full EIA study, um, as I told every, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, public scoping is essential and it is required. Um, because the public itself should be part or should participate to the EAA study, especially if they will be directly affected with the proposed study or with the proposed activity. And of course, a professional EAA te team is usually required. As I told you earlier, um, in preparing the environmental impact statement um, report, it's actually, it's actually being done with a group and not with one person. So in, 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 uh, in, in, in an EIA team, it usually composed of, uh, it actually depends on the study. Um, it might uh, require um, an environmental science. It, uh, the team leader could be a, an EIA preparer. He or she could be an engineer. He or she could be a doctor. It depends, again, on the study um, that is being proposed or on the study that is, um, yeah, on the study that, or a project that is being proposed. So um, with few additions, uh, the basic outline of the preliminary assessment is a template of the steps involved in the full EA study. So um, of course the template, uh, there is um, still a background or development objectives and list of activities. There is a description of the baseline situation. Excuse me, there is also an evaluation of potential environmental impacts. Um, of course, there's also a mitigation and monitoring, and of course, the recommended findings. So, the, <clears throat> excuse me. So, the basic steps of the full EA study is uh, basically scope or scoping, um, evaluation of um, baseline situation, and then identify and choose alternatives, um, and then identify and characterize uh, potential impacts of the proposed activity and each alternative. Of course, compare this alternative and develop mitigation and um, mitigation and monitoring. And um, of course, communicate and um, communicate and document throughout the full EIA study. So, um, in summary, 